there is this one thing with DeFi chain, this one glimmer of hope. It hopefully works out in 2023. Otherwise the whole ecosystem might as well collapse. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the meta chain, the EVM compatible chain, the project that allows external investors to simply just use their MetaMask wallet in order to interact with the DeFi chain. Now, why am I so dramatic here? It's because 2022 did not work out too well for DeFi chain. So in this video, we are going to look at the positives and the negatives. You're not going to see me shill the project and pushing up the DFI token. You're also not going to see me bash everything. You're going to see the good and the bad. And in the end, hopefully by the end of this video, you can make your own decision whether or not it makes sense to get involved in the ecosystem. Now, first things first, right? According to CoinMarketCap, DeFi chain is at rank 221. So it's got a market cap of 285 million. Now let's start with socials first, right? This is Google Trends, this is DeFi chain, and we can see there was quite a bit of a rise during the end of 2021, the DeFi summer, since then a decline. The DeFi chain search term is somewhat dormant. So there's not a lot of hype, not a lot of momentum around this. This is not why I make this video. I make this video, by the way, because it was requested by one of the premium members. Now. How is the total value lock developing? This is one of the main metrics for any blockchain and also for DeFi chain. You want to know how much capital is locked up in a chain because this is also a reflection of how much opportunity there is. DeFi chain used to have more than a billion in terms of total value locked, almost 1.2 billion. Now it's at 300 million. So it went down by like roughly 80% or so. This is not atypical. We see this for many blockchains, but some are already recovering, right? When you look at Arbitrum, for example, it's recovering, going close to its all-time highs. Not so for DeFi chain. Now, this decline in total value locked is not necessarily due to less people using the ecosystem. This is mainly due to valuation decreases. When we look at the Ethereum based token, right? DeFi chain is its own chain, but it does have an Ethereum port. It also has a Binance Smart Chain port. When we look at the Ethereum based token and we look at the number of holders, this tends to move quite nicely, right? This is an ever increasing number of holders that hold at least 10 of those tokens, Ethereum based. When you look at the whales, also the whales are not selling, right? Those are the ones that hold at least 100,000 tokens, so 50k US dollars worth of the token. So neither the whales nor the small potato is selling the token on Ethereum. That's positive. What's not so positive is the performance. This is DFI measured in Ethereum. This used to go up quite nicely, right? But since January of 2021, the decline is massive from top to bottom, an underperformance of 85%. And we just look at the last year where Bitcoin went not so great, but DeFi went even worse, right? This is DeFi versus Ethereum down 63%. So that's kind of the problem, right? Uh, of course, altcoins don't do too well during bear markets, but some altcoins can at least keep pace with Ethereum and Bitcoin. They don't lose too much against those main uh, assets. Uh, DeFi chain, DFI is very different from this. Now, in general, the ecosystem is interesting, right? It is very professional. You do have quite a lot of development around this. You've got this DeFi centralized uh, blockchain. You've got the DeFi chain explorer and you've got ways to simply park your money in liquidity pools and get money from the swapping fees. Okay, that's these APYs that we see over here. The issue currently with DeFi chain is that it's not EVM compatible. So you can't just use your MetaMask in order to use DeFi chain. You have to use the proprietary wallet that the DeFi chain wallet currently more than a thousand users. It's not huge. But you can't just take your MetaMask and interact with the chain. And this does hinder quite a bit of adoption. That's why DeFi chain is planning to roll out this Meta chain. Now, currently, if you want to get involved, you have to buy the DeFi token. So it seems like that's mainly done through centralized exchanges, right? Qcoin, Gate.io, etc. Even those apparently decentralized platforms, right? Decentralized finance exchange. 
it still looks very much like a centralized company to me, right? You still need to use your bank account in order to get these DFI tokens, apparently. I haven't used this, but this is my first impression. So the only way you can get these DFI tokens on that wallet without doing KYC and all of that stuff is to use a bridge. And currently the DeFi bridge only provides the Binance blockchain, okay, the Binance smart chain. That's how you currently bridge DFI. So if you currently buy the DFI token on the Binance smart chain, uh, you can port it over and that's that. So that's why this meta chain matters so much, right? If it's such a big barrier to entrance to get into the ecosystem, it's very hard to get this total value locked up to get the swapping activity up if you're just reliant on this one blockchain specific wallet. Now, there's another problem. And this problem is their stablecoin. So a stablecoin should be pegged one to one to the dollar. This is not what happened for um, DUSD, right? DeFi chain, US dollars. It depegged quite a while ago, even before the FTX collapse. Um, and it has a hard time to recover. When you watch uh, certain interviews around uh, this problem in YouTube, you find out that there seems to be still some reliance on crypto prices to be high enough. So people anticipate that the pack might get restored once Bitcoin is at around 30k again. That's not really the idea of a stablecoin though, right? This is probably one reason why people flee the ecosystem. If you've got a stablecoin that's not really stable, then what does all DeFi in the world help you? You need to somehow anticipate what your returns are. And if your stablecoin is actually also a volatile asset, you've got a big, big problem at hand. So that would be my very first thing to look at before getting into DFI for my personal risk tolerance, right? I want to see this to get very close again to the $1 mark and sustainably above this, right? Not just a quick shot up, get to the $1 mark and then probably DFI can get more investments again. The second thing is the launch of this meta chain, right? If this really happens and doesn't get postponed again and again and again, it can probably attract a lot of capital as well, pushing up the prices. Until these things happen, this is very risky. There are different videos discussing the roadmap for the DeFi chain. And one of those items that's also been discussed by Julian Hosp is potentially using this meta chain as an EVM layer, but then the DeFi chain itself to enable automatic execution of smart contracts on EVM. So currently the Ethereum virtual machine blockchains, they usually don't allow you to automatically trigger a background worker, right? You can't just automatically send money, say every month uh, to somewhere. You need an external computer to make that call in order to do any kind of execution. There's no automatic layer that can execute anything. So that was one of the ideas that Julian had here. Maybe we can use the DeFi chain to trigger things on the meta chain in order to do automatic transactions. And this would generate a lot of demand for DeFi chain and a lot of adoption. I'm not sure if that's enough of a feature, unfortunately, because something very close to this is already released by Chainlink, right? So with Chainlink, you can, for any of those EVM compatible chains, do automatic execution. You can also pull in external data from all kinds of APIs using Chainlink. You have to pay those link tokens, right? So it does have quite a bit of a cost, but the, the possibility is there. If you need automatic execution of smart contracts, you can do this with Chainlink. So you put in all the data in the Chainlink user interface and then Chainlink itself will do those calls. And Chainlink is pretty trusted. I'd rather argue that the Chainlink execution might be even more trusted than DeFi chain, simply because of the size and because of the long history of the platform. So I'm not sure if that's actually enough. Automatic execution is probably not going to save the chain. What is probably going to help is a rest restoration of the pack and is the launch of the meta chain. Before that, for me, it's too high risk, but that's a personal thing, right? If you are the person that simply just buys very, very low when everybody gave up hope in order to be very uh, against the masses, to be very contrarian, this might be something for you. But be aware, 
if momentum does not turn around, these down moves can be very, very brutal, right? So this is a game against the clock. You have to monitor very, very closely that the development happens fast enough. Otherwise, you're simply just burning money, parking your funds in the DFI token. If you found this useful, feel free to join our Telegram and our Discord. That's down below. Looking forward to see you there and looking forward to see you in the next video as well. Bye-bye.